this puppy was referred for echo with a grade 6 murmur and suspicion of a PDA, but what I found was actually something very different. It's really important in echo to stick to a protocol. It's fine to elaborate your study and get additional views, but you mustn't get carried away and forget to get your core views. So whilst I can see that there's something going on on the right side of the heart, which isn't what I was expecting, I'm twisting my wrist here, opening up the aorta, getting the aortic valve, and putting my colour Doppler over the aortic valve and the mitral valve, just as I would any other study. I can see there's something going on behind with my colour Doppler, but I'm trying not to get too distracted by it just yet. From the short axis at papillary muscle level, the thickness of the right ventricle is even more obvious. The left ventricle has a slight D shape, which is that classic flattening of the septum due to the high pressures in the right. So I know at this point that we're dealing with high right heart pressures, but I still haven't found the cause. By tilting up now towards the base of the heart, I can see the pulmonary artery and by putting my colour Doppler over it, I can see there's very turbulent flow there. By moving just one rib space and tilting my wrist up a little, I'm able to open the pulmonary artery up a little bit more and see the bifurcation. Then using my continuous wave Doppler, I first of all get a trace of the regurgitation, so I'm shifting my baseline down. I actually changed probes at this point because my lower frequency phased array probe can handle high velocities with the continuous wave Doppler better than my higher frequency probe. I'm getting velocities here of almost 6 meters per second through the pulmonary valve, so clearly we're dealing with a very severe case of pulmonary stenosis. This is clearly valvular and you can actually see the thickened valve leaflets in this image here. This is very unusual. In dogs most of the time you can barely see the pulmonary valve leaflets at all. We could have stopped the study here, we had the diagnosis, but the puppy was so well behaved we actually flipped him over onto the other side to get some apical views. Again you can see just how thick the walls of the right ventricle are here, much thicker than the left actually. I'm slightly off axis here because what I was doing was trying to see if I could see any tricuspid regurgitation through the tricuspid valve, so I'm using my colour to search for that jet. In this next view you can see I've now foreshortened the ventricle, again searching for that tricuspid regurgitation. I couldn't find a jet and that's a good prognostic sign for this puppy. Of course there are far more views and measurements you can take in a case like this. If you can get an eccentricity index, fantastic. If you can calculate a dimensionless index using your pulse wave and your continuous wave, great. But actually, if you're just doing an initial screen and you're going to refer on to a specialist, all you really need to say is that this puppy has severe pulmonary stenosis and if you can quote a valve gradient or your peak velocity through the valve, that's all they're going to need. If you like this video and found it helpful, please do subscribe to this channel. You might also like to consider signing up to my veterinary echocardiography newsletter. I run a weekly echo clinic at my local vet practice. I'm a sonographer, so I work hand in hand with the vets there. And I send out this newsletter once a month with cases just like this. I'll put the link down below.